Joe was a young patriotic man, initially optimistic about his commitment to the American military during the dawn of World War I. Despite his girlfriend Corrine's pleas for Joe to stay, to be a slacker, to do anything else as long as he's safe, Joe goes to the front line, during the burial of a dead Bavarian creating a foul odour in the trench. Hit with an artillery shell, Joe loses his ability to see, smell, speak, and his limbs are irreparable, resulting in amputation. Unable to leave the hospital bed, Joe gradually recognises the extent of his condition and becomes frustrated, devastated and isolated within his dreams, memories, thoughts and visions, rarely receiving compassion from military personnel and hospital staff, beyond the head nurse and a young nurse who gradually learns how to communicate with Joe. This is Dalton Trumbo's adaptation of his own classic novel, Johnny Got His Gun, originally published in 1939. A devastating anti-war film, or a pro-life film, depending on the perspective. Johnny Got His Gun explores Dalton Trumbo's staunchly anti-war perspective with an irrepressible fury towards the callous and cruel actions of government men in power, while never sacrificing the essential empathy necessary towards the poor individuals who have their lives and bodies taken away through the suffering of war. Through the narrative's non-linearity and metaphysical storytelling, via memories which blur into dreams and visions of Jesus Christ, the film aims to remind the audience to appreciate what we so often take for granted within our lives. It is abundantly clear that Dalton Trumbo didn't approve of war. He was aligned with communism and strongly holding a point of view which was disapprovingly named isolationist, referring to a political ideology advocating for a foreign policy in which America would refuse to participate in other nations' wars. Johnny Got His Gun's portrayal of Joe's earlier memories are based on Trumbo's own early life in Colorado and Los Angeles, serving as a personally revealing reflection on childhood experiences, family bonding, first love, youthful clarity and naivety, and the depictions of Joe within a hospital bed as a quadruple amputee was inspired by Curly Christian, a World War I Canadian soldier who became a quadruple amputee within the war, using his experience to become an anti-war and disability activist. Dalton Trumbo wrote Johnny Got His Gun as an indictment of war and its cruel consequences on the people caught in the middle of it during a time in which the Second World War was brewing. Within this text, there is a sense of prophetic consideration for war's rippling effect, a sense of rage towards the callous leaders who continue to perpetrate war with little consideration for the lives they use as pawns. In the film adaptation's own depiction of authority, there seems to be an additional layer of anger present, likely due to Dalton Trumbo's own experience of being blacklisted in Hollywood after refusing to testify before the House on american Activities Committee. Due to the committee's persecution of figures, they deemed threatening communist influences within the filmmaking industry. With this own personal experience of facing men in power, intent on chastising those beneath them, is there any wonder why Dalton Trumbo Trumbo would be initially confrontational in his criticism of government officials, and a striking empathy is present within the film too, for those who are directly impacted by the widespread violence. It's a harrowing novel deservedly respected as a classic, so who else would be more appropriate in bringing Trumbo's own literary vision to the screen than Trumbo himself? Within Johnny Got His Gun, there is a scene from Joe's childhood within a church alongside his family, listening to a reverend give a sermon about man not being simply a material being, but a spiritual one. Within the context of the scene, a connection is towards a person and their faith, but within the wider context of the film adaptation, this is a prophetic sermon that foreshadows Joe's eventual outcome. Unable to use his physical form in the same manner pre-artillery shell blast, Joe relies on his mentality to count the days within hospital, to create comforting scenarios in his head, like celebrating New Year's Eve with his beloved Kareem, or to cry out for his mother, father and Jesus to help wake him up from what he hopes is a nightmare. It's in Joe's mental headspace that Johnny Got His Gun begins to explore non-linearity and the metaphysical. Joe admits that he must think to stop himself from thinking. He must think of the days passing, the sun on his skin, the memories he has, or the things he would say to Jesus Christ if he could, all to stop himself from being driven into a suffering-led madness at his current condition. The shifts from Joe's hospital bed into a dream, or a memory, or an amalgamation of both can be hinged on a single word, or a specific moment within his present situation, progressing into the only form of escape he can access. 
However, these escapes into an increasingly delirious mind are not necessarily escapist, as Joe is often reminded of his anxieties, his flaws, his insecurities, his remorse about leaving Kareem back home with a high unlikelihood of ever meeting her again, and about the last moments with his father, who Joe briefly meets again while visiting seemingly the afterlife that reflects his own final camping trip with his father. The land contains milk, and his father eats honey, referencing the land of milk and honey, a phrase found within the Old Testament referencing to an easier existence, a place of blessing, and a new life. This serves as a bleak reminder of Joe's emotional and physical vulnerability, and the bleak prospects he may face in the future that offers no improvement for him. But these shifts into Joe's memory and mind serve also as a method in which Trumbo extends his empathy towards human torment, and it allows us as viewers to extend our empathy too. This was a young man who had hopes, dreams, love, kindness, family and friends, and even without those aspects, he would still be a human being who has experienced and continues to experience injustice in his negligent treatment from military personnel and ignorant hospital staff who feel the utility room is appropriate enough for a vulnerable soul. The reason why Johnny Got His Gun is so emotionally devastating is because it's difficult not to connect with Joe on some level. Roger Ebert wrote within his review for Johnny Got His Gun elaborating on his thoughts that the film was less an anti-war film and more a pro-life one, stating that Trumbo has taken the most difficult sort of material, the story of a soldier who lost his arms, his legs and most of his face in a World War I shell burst and handled it, strange to say, in a way that's not so much anti-war as pro-life. Perhaps that's why I admire it. Trumbo remained stubbornly on the human level. He lets his ideology grow out of his characters, instead of imposing it from above. Through Joe, encompassing Dalton Trumbo's ideology against war and his humanising empathy, Johnny Got His Gun serves as a reminder to appreciate the aspects of our lives we may take for granted. Whether we may be able-bodied, sound of mind, or able to connect with our senses, Joe is a humanising reminder that all these aspects of life can easily be taken from us. This is why Roger Ebert makes the distinction that this is a pro-life movie. Johnny Got His Gun may leave viewers emotional at the bleak prospects ahead of Joe's existence, but we finish this film with a deeper appreciation, even if these aspects of our lives may not be perfect, of our families, friends, partners and senses, our mental health, our physicality, all in the knowledge that everything is finite. In conclusion, Johnny Got His Gun, whether we consider it an anti-war film, a pro-life film, or something in between, is a damning indictment of the violent conflicts led by callous fools in power that takes unnecessary victims, as well as a striking lesson for viewers to appreciate what they may be taking for granted. There's a relevancy to Johnny Got His Gun not simply due to the ongoing inevitability of war, but also for the necessity in retaining the rights of patients, including offering access to assisted dying, rather than prolonging the suffering of someone simply to continue living through their condition. Joe deserved the relief he sought, and knowing that he'll never receive it is a thoroughly sobering ending to a brutal film. Equally a furious, yet also a compassionate film, Johnny Got His Gun remains a deeply necessary one. Special thank you to my incredible tier patron supporter Gil and my super tier patron supporters Constantine Bombelli and Jamie. 